Let us start this lecture with a thought process name and fame flickers like a flame which may douse any instant with a little gust of wind. So, um, in the last lecture if you uh, see that we basically looked at the ignition energy types of ignition uh, system one can think of and then later on we found out a, a simplified relationship for the minimum ignition energy and we have looked at like it will be dependent on the pressure, initial temperature and then equivalence ratio, type of fuel air uh, mixtures kind of things. But uh, now, I will be giving you some evidence how it is changing particularly from uh, taking some experimental data. Right. If you look at as I told that uh, in the um, last uh, lecture, we analyze basically the minimum ignition energy on a quiescent atmosphere, there is no velocity. But in real situation, for example, gas turbine engine, uh, spark ignition engine, even in your uh, LPG stove, it is not quiescent, it will be moving right some velocity will be there. So, that uh, we will have to look at it and uh, we are looking at effect of low velocity on ignition energy and uh, this is the energy is not really related to minimum ignition it is about the energy which will be released whenever you apply some uh, gap width between the spark electrode and certain pressure you will be giving right. So, uh, this is being shown here that is the energy release versus the velocity. You can see that um, for all the cases whatever the spark uh, gap width is there that is uh, basically is uh, increasing with the velocity which is expected because some of the heat will be taken away. So, uh, therefore, uh, the heat release which will be affected by that and when of course, the gap is uh, increasing then it is uh, basically energy requirement will be higher because the you will have to give some amount of energy, uh, the voltage will be higher and then you will have to give more amount of energy in the volume. So, uh, if you take this uh, data and then couch in the form of some empirical relationship, we will get uh, I R 16 R E D 0.15, D is the 0.85, this width is basically nothing but D. Okay. And keep in mind that this R in I R is the ignition energy release in millijoules, R E is the Reynolds number based on uh, using D as the length scale right and D is the spark gap. And this is a semi empirical uh, result which will be utilized only for uh, the range it is being experimented, it cannot be generalized okay, that you should keep in mind. <coughs> Let us look at the effect of velocity on the minimum ignition energy, right. Here uh, the situation is like that turbulence is 1, uh, 1 percent very low turbulence and equivalence ratio 1.0 and this is basically uh, C 3 H 8 uh, air mixture, right. And pressure is 0 0.1 atmosphere. And that depends on the how this electrode, these are basically electrode right and flow is this way like electrode are being arranged, it is what type of electrode right and this is a, a line itself like along with the flow, this is different. So, therefore, in this case the ignition energy, minimum ignition energy is higher right as compared to the d is equal to 2 centimeter right, both are same, but it is having. And however, you can note our main point is that minimum ignition energy increases with the velocity, right. It increases with the velocity that indicates what we had seen earlier, but that is not minimum ignition that is the energy will be released whenever you apply certain kind amount of voltage and current, right. <coughs> and uh, let us look at the effect of turbulent velocity on minimum ignition energy. And this is a uh, is not experimental, some kind of a uh, semi empirical relationship that I have taken. And uh, U dash is the uh, turbulent fluctuating velocities, it is something 0, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5 meter per second. This is very quite low turbulence level. 
and you can see even though low turbulence level the minimum ignition energy for any particular equivalence ratio if you look at there is a increase in the uh, minimum ignition energy where the u dash goes on increasing from 0 to 1 and this is 0 means there is no turbulence at all right kind of things. So, you can see that uh, it is uh, basically minimum ignition energy is affected by the turbulence level, it is affected by the velocity, affected by the initial temperature, pressure and fuel air mixture and uh, its ratio, type of fuel air mixture and its ratio means fuel air ratio. right? So, uh, these are the things what we have discussed till now about uh, ignition uh, energy and now we will be moving into the turbulent uh, flame. <coughs> so, uh, till now uh, we have discussed about basically laminar uh, flames or the laminar premix flame to be more particular and uh, because of fact that this is very fundamental although the laminar flames are really used in application. Can you tell me where we use laminar flame in application wise? LPG burner you can consider it to be laminar, but actually it is a jet. So, generally there will be some turbulence flow, but you can consider that as a laminar approximately. Otherwise, other places like it will be uh, basically turbulent uh, being imparted in the combustors. Uh, because of fact that they want to release the heat at a very higher rate. right? So, therefore, it is being used. Of course, nowadays uh, people are talking about micro combustors where the laminar flame will be there. right? And this is of course, uh, application is not that very uh, predominant or not being used that much, but however, it will be there. But we discuss too much on the laminar premix flame because that is fundamental to even turbulent flame. So, therefore, it is and um, uh, in practical application like your gas turbine application, spark ignition engine, furnace and other burners right industrial burners um, uh, the turbulence is being utilized intentionally right to enhance the flame stability and also the um, uh, release the heat release at a higher rate. So, uh, if you look at uh, the turbulence basically uh, what happens when you use the turbulence you will be having certain eddies and then that helps in mixing the things and there will be fluctuating velocities which will be there. So, mixing occurs due to the random motion of eddies which we had uh, discussed the eddies earlier right. <coughs> and, um, as a result the mixing will be good and it will be affecting the flame surface right and as a result the flame will be very convoluted kind of things and it affects the flame propagation rate that is a very important right. But uh, however, uh, it is uh, being talked about that it does not affect the chemical kinetics, but however, in recent time there is a contest in this people some people are saying that uh, it does affect the chemistry under certain regime right it's not a universal statement what people are believing but this is the recent one which is not a part of your textbook kind of thing which is all debatable so um, that is uh, we can uh, you know keep in mind and uh, as i told that turbulent flames are random or the chaotic in nature right because of what because of eddies and eddies will be of various kinds large eddies small eddies medium scale is we have talked about various scales like integral scale like a kolmogorov scale uh, taylor micro scales all kinds of scales we have had already discussed so those scales will be different so therefore the the vortex sizes will be different and it will be very violent in the nature so, uh, as a result what will happen that instantaneous flame front is highly uh, corrugated or the convoluted unlike the flame in case of laminar flame you might have seen I have shown you some picture very very smooth very slick, but here it is not. So, it will be 
very much a corrugated kind of surface you will get like for example, if you take any one line this will be corrugated. For example, if I draw that here it is not the way I am drawing it will be very zigzag kind of thing this is a corrugated right. So, this flame is not as smooth as this looks to be right. So, uh, this is the features because of ADs it will be uh, violent it will be trying to make this uh, flame surface to be wrinkled right. And uh, this uh, flame uh, surface will be changing uh, its position with respect to time rapidly and randomly right. It will be very fast right and also. So, as a result what will happen when you take a image of the flame turbulent uh, premix flame particularly Bunsen flame what we are talking about now you will find that it looks to be a very thick flame right. And why? Because of fact that uh, this all these uh, things, this we call it uh, basically flamelet, right? And this is at any instant of time. But when you take image, you will be taking certain time. You know, like when you take this image in a high speed photograph, then you will get a, some corrugated shape, right? Otherwise in general camera you would not get or in your naked eyes you would not see. You say it looks to be smooth, no that is not smooth. So, uh, this is we call it as basically a flame brush because if I consider this you know all these images you are looking at one stone there might be several of them right. right. And this, this inner one and outer one what you will be seeing right in the flame that we call a virtual turbulent flame thickness. The actual flame will be very thin, but you are getting this this thickness. For example, thickness here it will be like that higher, right? And this is virtual because of you can't see it in your naked eyes except very high speed, uh, you know, imaging. Uh, we can see that. So, uh, <coughs> but laminar flamelets, as I told, it is a instantaneous reaction zone. Laminar flamelet. As I told one of them, let us say red color I have shown any one of them right will be instantaneous reaction zone. So, uh, now when you talk about uh, ba basically uh, turbulent uh, flame, there will be various regimes right. And now uh, it can be broadly divided into four categories right, that does not mean only four categories ok, there will be several varieties also in between right. So, uh, this uh, turbulence one will be weak turbulent flame, other is will be wrinkle laminar flame that means it will be wrinkling the flame surface, but it is laminar in nature right and flamelet in eddies and distributed reaction zone. Now, question arises we have uh, talked about it, but how we are going to uh, basically uh, divide into four categories. If you look at like uh, we have already uh, looked at that I mean what are the variables uh, when you talk about turbulent flame what are the variables which affect the turbulent flame right. Any idea? Of course, you can think of various length scales right ok also velocities. When you talk about velocities right, it will be the fluctuating quantities that will be affecting right, yes or no. For example, if I say that uh, fluid is having a, a fluid is turbulent right or the velocity is turbulent, uh, I can talk about time here and this is your velocity is here, I can right some velocity fluctuation right and this is nothing but your v x I can say if it is this x with respect to time right. I am talking about one dimensional like flame. Now, there will be some average velocity right if I take this with respect to time I will be more interested to look at what is the average right. This is my average velocity v right. So, uh, if you look at this is v is equal to or v x is equal to 
v x average plus v dash. Now, this v dash is changing with respect to time, but which will be affecting the flame? Is it v average or v x or v dash? It will be v dash which will be affecting the flame surface because that is the fluctuation. If you look at uh, this is basically uh, what is this v uh, x or this is v x dash, v x dash what is the v x dash I can talk about this is the v x dash right and it is related to time then how I will consider right what I will have to do I will have to define a RMS velocity v dash RMS will be basically root over v dash square x I can say because I am talking about x or right are you getting average root mean square this is root mean square velocity fluctuating right the component. So, that will that means this will be function basically turbulent flame will be function of V dash RMS then what are the length scale we have talked about one is integral scale or Taylor micro scale another we will be talking about Kolmogorov scale LK beside this it will be function of what it will be of course the laminar bending velocity it will be uh, also dependent on the flame laminar flame thickness and it will be also dependent on the properties like a uh, uh, kinematic viscosity right new is the kinematic viscosity because these are whatever the laminar will be considering and also will be considering the turbulence whatever this. So, now when you talk about that this basically you will be looking at the Reynolds number for turbulent flame and that is nothing but your uh, Re based on the integral scale or the Taylor micro scale integral scale and Taylor micro scale L naught is equal to V dash RMS L naught right into nu. And uh, this uh, if you look at then that is the Reynolds number because it will be very difficult to consider all those things, but you can put into a non dimensional form to understand what is happening. <coughs> so, chemical reaction time I can define as delta L by S L we have already uh, looked at that you know because that is nothing but your time in which the chemical reaction this is the L and L and delta L. Uh, is basically flame thickness right flame means flame thickness of what it is a laminar laminar flame thickness right and S L is the laminar bending velocity right this is uh, laminar bending velocity. So, we will be also defining another uh, time scale that is turbulence mixing time right and that is nothing but your uh, T m is equal to L naught divided by uh, V dash R m s right root mean square velocity fluctuating velocities right and uh, that uh, we will be talking about like uh, how much this uh, A d s will be taking time to get mixed kind of things like with the V R M S other thing. And we can also define another uh, non dimensional number considering the chemical reaction time and turbulent mixing time that we call it as a dumb color number right. Dumb color number uh, is uh, basically T m divided by T C H and which is I have already using this. Uh, chemical reaction time nothing but delta L by S L and this is L naught divided by V R M S dash right. And I can write down this as basically L naught by delta L divided by the uh, V R M S by S L. And this is uh, if you look at this is basically length scale ratio. And this is the uh, term one can look at is the uh, 
uh, how far the root mean square velocity is different than the bending velocity. This is you can say that uh, velocity ratio, right. Now, we are now what we are defining, we are basically talking about the Reynolds number and Damkohler number like you know uh, from these variables and we can look at what really happening because can we combine this uh, Reynolds number and Damkohler number together and see what we are getting. If I say this is uh, Re um, L naught into D A is nothing but your RMS l naught by nu into uh, I can say this is l naught right uh, l naught s l by delta naught v dash r m s right. So, this v r m s will cancel it out and uh, we can get is uh, basically uh, l naught and uh, L naught S L uh, you know L naught square is coming. Now, we know this is not delta this will be L ok. We can uh, also express in terms of the S L in terms of flame length thickness. We know that S L right uh, S L is equal to basically 4 by 3 alpha by uh, S L right. No, sorry. Uh, S L is equal to 4 by alpha by delta L right. Yes or no? So, <coughs> now we can write down this as basically R E L naught D A is nothing but your L naught square right and uh, L naught square in S L I am putting it uh, this values. So, this is 4 by 3 alpha by uh, delta L into 1 by delta L right. So, yes or no right. So, this is basically I can say 4 by 3 uh, there is a new will be coming ok. Uh, nu will be in down right. So, you can say alpha by nu right and uh, there is a L naught square by delta L square. So, if I take a root over of that right root over that then it shows that is proportional to L naught by delta L right. That means, what it indicates if this is a very high values root over R e L naught D A naught if it is a very high values let us say something 10 power to the 3 to 10 power to the 4 right. What happens? Right. It will be uh, very high means means what like L naught will be much higher than the flame thickness the ADs will be very large right and that will be affecting basically the flame um, shape right. For example, if I say this is my flame right and this is the ADs which will be there which is having a distance of L naught. So, it will be corrugating the flame, but it would not be affecting the chemical reaction. So, this is known as wrinkle uh, wrinkle laminar flame right linked laminar flame. In this case what I am saying the length scale is much greater than the delta L. There might be a situation where length uh, scale right uh, is very very less it is uh, order of or uh, it is length scale is less than the delta L. Then what will happen? There might be a flame here the ADs will be these are ADs right which will be smaller than the flame thickness this is basically delta uh, L right. So, this is known as small scale and other things. So, that will be affecting 
the uh, make a flame thickness right in the flame inside it will be affecting because of uh, it may affect also the chemistry because the mixing will be very higher here right. So, this is another thing which is called flame led flame eddies eddies in flame right eddies in flame right. So, uh, now we will have to uh, I think I missed one point let us uh, look at that there is a damp color number when it is higher right. So, uh, if damp color number is greater than 1 very very higher values what it indicates that means, this is length scale is very very higher and then the chemical uh, reaction time that means, chemical reaction time is much smaller right than the mixing time means the chemistry will be very fast right it will be instantaneously as soon as it will mixed it will reacting will uh, reaction will be taking place. So, uh, if the damp color number is uh, very very small than 1 then that means the mixing is faster the length scale ratio is much higher as compared to the velocity ratio or in other words the mixing time is much very very small as compared to the chemical time right. So, that is damp color number less than 1 fast mixing regime right. And uh, this is uh, if you look at the fast chemistry this will be thin flame, flame will be very thin right as compared to what as compared to the, the size, size of eddies which will be affecting the flame. And based on this uh, what happened is, uh, is basically uh, about uh, the people have uh, divided the various regime and that is uh, a diagram which is being talked about to divide these flames and uh, as I told that uh, turbulent flame right flame is basically function of what I have already told let me summarize it L naught that is the Reynolds number based on the integral scale damp color number right then I can talk about V R M S by S L right and I will talk about a another scale which we had not considered, but we will talk about is a Kolmogorov scale right um, that is L K by delta L and uh, there is of course, we have already considered integral scale by the delta L flame thickness. So, these are the variables which based on which we can have this uh, diagram where we will delineate the various regimes of the flame. And the plot is uh, basically damp color number uh, against the Reynolds number and a log log plot which I have shown here right and depicts various regimes of turbulent flames. If you look at the, the weak turbulence will be occurring here where damp color number is very high right but whereas, the Reynolds number is small this is the region right these are the regions where we are talking about weak turbulence right. And uh, this is the upper region of Borghi dam and this region where uh, V R M S S L is uh, around 10 power to minus 2 and L K uh, by this thing is equal to 1 right in this region is basically uh, wrinkle laminar flame where the damp color number is moderate, but Reynolds number is very high regime like it is from high to low and uh, in this regime from L k by uh, in this wrinkle laminar flame chemical reaction takes place in a thin reaction zone right. The uh, kinetics is very very fast right the size of the eddies will be larger, but uh, this zone is the flamelet in eddies which will be uh, basically L k by delta L is equal to 1 to L naught divided by delta L is equal to in this regime it takes flame and uh, reaction zone is the, this regime may have several non combusting zones right means there will be some holes in the combust in the reaction zone because that will be quenching the flame locally and some places it will be there. So, uh, reaction zone will not be uh, will not be there. So, uh, and, uh, and <coughs> right and there is a very important one the distributor reaction zone where which will be taking place at the low Lenas number and low damp color number. 
and this is a regime uh, below the L naught by delta L and distributed reaction zone, but this is not practically achieved, right. The action sheet are distributed in the uh, turbulent flame surface and, uh, uh, but however, people are thinking if they could devise a, uh, you know, combustors or a burner in this regime, that will be very good because it can have a higher uh, heat release and also the uh, people are expecting that um, the emissions will be reduced. So, uh, but this is not that easy to uh, really establish in practical situations. With this, uh, I will stop over, we will be discussing about uh, in the next lecture uh, about various aspects of the, uh, you know, uh, turbulent uh, flames. Thank you very much.